Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm creating anime characters from AI-generated art. A major topic in the art community recently has been AI-generated art. Basically, there are programs where you can type in a couple of words and a picture will be generated based on what you type. This topic has gotten a bit heated, uh, but today I thought I'd try to have some fun with it. So I made three wheels. The first one picks if I draw a boy or a girl. The second one picks the overall color for the picture. And the last one picks a random word. I will type the words I get into the AI art program. In this case, I'm using crayon. It used to be called Dolly. Uh, so anyways, let's see what the wheel gives me. So I got girl, red, and church. I know I'm the one that made the list of words, but I didn't think church would get picked out of all of the random ones I typed in. <laughs> uh, so in the program, I typed out anime girl in church wearing red. And this is what I got. These first two actually have really neat backgrounds. This one's face is a bit creepy. Uh, something I find a bit funny is that a lot of these don't have hands. Even artificial intelligence doesn't like to draw hands. <laughs> Um, so out of these options, I do like the ones with the fancy backgrounds, but this one here looks really fun to redraw. The character doesn't look super disfigured, and the lighting looks fun to play around with. Also, real quick before we jump into the video, if you could hit the subscribe button, turn all notifications on, and give this video a thumbs up, it would mean so much to me. It helps out the channel a ton. From the looks of it, we have a girl with her head turned to the left, and it is in a kind of three-quarter view. For the facial expression, the original art doesn't really have much for one, so I'll draw my character with the kind of generic anime girl face. The eyebrows are a bit raised and the mouth is open just a little bit. Uh, one thing I did find a bit funny about the AI art is that for the anime stuff, a lot of it looks like art from the early 2000s or like 2010. I don't know, it all just kind of gives me that more old school anime vibe compared to how a lot of anime art looks now. It was making me feel nostalgic. <laughs> For her hair, it is long and she has bangs. I was kind of seeing a hair ribbon kind of thing right here. Uh, so I added that in mine as well. I suppose it could have just been a hair strand. Uh, but I thought the ribbon seemed kind of cute. The character is wearing a red dress that has a collar and uh, maybe a ribbon. I don't know. I'm going to add a ribbon. Things are kind of hard to make out so it's up to interpretation. One thing that was tricky is I didn't know what to do with the right arm. From the looks of it, the arm is bending and then there is a ruffle that is maybe at the end of the sleeve. But once again, there is no hand. For mine, I decided to have the hand kind of just peeking out of the sleeve. I did consider having the sleeve fully cover the hand, but I like the idea of it peeking out a little bit more. Uh, so that's the pose I came up with. Like I said, it wasn't super clear in the original. Now I'm doing the cleanup sketch. I'm switching over to the Clip Studio Paint captured footage for this because I tend to move the screen around a lot when I'm doing my cleanup sketch. And a lot of times for my illustrations, I do a rough sketch, cleanup sketch, line art, and then coloring. However, this time I'm going to change things up. You see the artificial intelligence created art looked kind of painty in style. There isn't a ton of line art and things are more formed with blobs of color. Because of this, I thought I would try to make my illustration look a bit more painty in style. So I'll be using my digital painting process. I feel like it's been a long time since I last did digital painting. Uh, let me look. Okay, I think the last time I did was in this video where I draw myself into Encanto. So yeah, it's been like eight months. I do have to say I was a bit nervous about trying to do digital painting again, uh, but also kind of excited since it has been so long. So for digital painting, I eventually merge all of my layers so I can easily paint and change things by coloring over stuff. But for now, I keep my layers separate while getting the basic shading in place, just to make things a bit easier. I don't have to worry about getting rid of all of my sketch. <laughs> the AI generated picture has a good amount of contrast between the darks and the lights. So for my picture, I'm trying to be a bit more bold with my shadows and I'm trying to make them darker than I usually do. I find I tend to be a bit chicken when it comes to working with high contrast shadows and highlights. So this was a good challenge for me, I think. It pushed me to think about the forms and be more decisive with them. Another thing about the AI art is that the hair looks pretty detailed or has a lot of different colors and shapes in it. 
Most often when I shade hair, I keep it fairly simple, I feel like. There is a bit of detail, but I don't often super define each and every strand. I just try to make it look shiny and flowy, I guess. Uh, but once again, I'm changing things up a bit. I'm trying to define the hair texture a bit more this time. And I'm also using many different shades of red to make things a bit more interesting. Uh, but with digital painting, for some reason, I do a lot of jumping around. So I'll come back to the hair later, I guess. <laughs> I suppose I felt like I need to add highlights to the clothes. I don't know why my process gets more chaotic when I'm doing digital painting. Like when I draw normally, for the most part, I work on each part at a time. But for this, I'm just jumping all over the place and it makes it a bit hard for me to talk about in the voiceover. <laughs> it's harder for me to stay on topic. So right now I'm working on the eyes, but I'm not going to bother talking about them much because I completely redo them later. I do not like how these ones look. I was trying to keep them dark like in the AI art. But I still wanted them to be kind of interesting, so I added some blue. But yeah, I end up changing them later. I felt like these ones looked kind of dull. So now that the basic shading is in place, I'm going to merge all of the character layers and start cleaning things up. I don't like to merge all of my layers, like including the background layers, because then it makes it difficult to apply gradients to just the character. So yeah, I only merge all of the character layers. I keep the background separate. Uh, so for a cleanup, I decided to start with the clothes, mostly just because I like to paint clothing folds. I find it really satisfying for some reason. For this process, I'm selecting colors from the picture and then painting over my sketch to clean things up. So I'm mostly trying to get rid of all of my random sketchy lines. Like I said, this is pretty different from my usual process. A lot of times I have line art and I fill the line art in a bit like a coloring book. But in this case, I have a bit more freedom because I'm painting over the sketch. It's a bit easier to make adjustments and things aren't as set in stone. Also, for most of the painting process, I'm using the thin gouache brush and the blending tool. Like I mentioned, AI created art has been a bit of a hot topic, especially over on Twitter. It seems like a lot of people are arguing about how it will eventually replace artists altogether. And I see a lot of people that aren't artists praising the AI generated art and acting like it's superior in some kind of way. However, a majority of people, especially artists like myself, aren't a huge fan of it. I personally find the concept a bit interesting and it is kind of neat. You can type in some words and get a picture almost instantly. However, I do also have a lot of issues with it. The biggest one being is that the program itself just kind of steals from actual artists. It's not truly creating anything, it's taking a bunch of stuff created by actual people and mushing it all together. Sometimes you'll even see the artist's watermark in the generated pictures. Not only is this annoying the artist because we already deal with a lot of art theft, but it also makes it very hard for the AI generated stuff to be available for commercial use because a lot of it is just kind of stolen. Professional companies won't want to come anywhere near this stuff because it could lead to some legal issues. I do have to admit some of the generated stuff does look a bit cool, but in all of the stuff I've generated, most of it looks like nightmare fuel. <laughs> and even the stuff that does look kind of cool, a good amount of it doesn't really make sense a lot of times. I saw a post on Twitter that pointed this out pretty well, and I'll see if I can find it again. So yeah, as you can see, the picture looks kind of neat, but if you know the fundamentals, you can tell there's a good amount off about the picture. Like things just don't quite make sense. Anyways, I guess those are some of my thoughts on this whole thing. And yeah, I feel like I could talk about this for longer, but I'll stop for now. <laughs> Anyways, back to the picture. One of the last things I did was change the eyes. Like I said before, I was kind of trying to keep them dark, but this resulted in them looking really dull. So the second time I went in with something closer to my usual shading style. And I'm glad I did because they do look much more shiny. I also like the inclusion of the red in the lower part of the eye and in the eyelashes. I had a lot of fun adding the color to the eyelashes. So here is the AI generated art. And here is my version. I tried to select all of the same colors, but with the way I apply shading, things just ended up being really colorful. <laughs> okay, so let's try doing this again with different prompts. But first I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you don't know what Skillshare is, it's an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes that cover all kinds of topics like illustration, animation, graphic design, and so much more. Skillshare is for everyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. Invest in yourself and your personal growth. A class I recommend is Digital Character Illustration. Transform a photo into a stylized portrait by Lord Griss. 
In this class, Lord shares her personal process for creating colorful, stylized portraits in her signature character illustration style. From first sketch to final color, you'll learn how to use a photo as your foundation for your portrait process, giving you the freedom to flex your creativity and experiment with a whole new illustration style. Skillshare is at free so you can stay in the zone while you're exploring new skills, has new premium classes launched each week, so there's always something new to discover, and their entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. If you are interested in trying Skillshare for yourself, the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So go try Skillshare today, and thank you so much again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So now let's see what the wheel gives me. This time we have boy, purple, and sakura. A lot of times sakura trees are pink, so I was a bit curious what I would do with purple. Oh goodness, we have more nightmare fuel. <laughs> uh, but we do have a good amount of options here. I'm kind of vibing with this picture, so I think I'll redraw this one. So for this picture, I was seeing a kind of depressed, edgy anime boy and a bunch of flowers. <laughs> In the picture, it's kind of just a blob with more weird blobs but I thought I'd interpret it as a bunch of flowers. And uh, even though the one eye will be covered by the hair, I still took time to sketch it in, mostly because things can end up a bit wonky if I don't take time to figure out where the other eye is. So it's easier to just quickly sketch it in. And for the pose, I'm having the right hand come up and he's kind of resting his head on his hand. It was actually a kind of fun pose to draw, especially since I could cover a lot of it with the flowers. <laughs> I was a bit nervous to draw all of the flowers, but I find a bit of a workaround later on. In last week's video, I talked a bit about how I needed to get the video done really fast because I was going to be taking some days off. I wanted to give you all an update and let you know that my days off went very well. I had a very nice few days. I took time off because my boyfriend came to visit me. This is the first time I'm telling you all about him. <laughs> uh, we've been dating for a little bit now. Um, but yeah, he came to visit me and my family. He showed us some different board games like Codenames and Phase 10. Codenames was a lot of fun since a lot of people can play it. And Phase 10 may have induced some chaos among the siblings. <laughs> but it was also really fun. And I also got to show him around my hometown, so that was a lot of fun. Also, my boyfriend and I both noticed we won't be single on Valentine's Day this year. Uh, you know, assuming things keep going well, and I hope they do. Uh, but... Around Valentine's Day, I usually make a new video in my series, I created a dating sim because I'm single on Valentine's Day, but this year I won't be single. What will I do? <laughs> It'll be my first Valentine's Day not being single. <laughs> oh, also here's where I find a bit of a workaround for the flowers. I dragged in a bunch of different flowers from the asset library, and I could have just gone with these flowers, but I decided to draw over the flowers to make them fit in better with the rest of the picture. I can draw flowers pretty easily, I don't have much trouble drawing them, but I did not have the patience to draw a whole bunch and also figure out the kind of placement I wanted for them. And so this helped speed things up a bit. I did still have to think a good amount when placing the different clumps of flowers. I wanted to make sure they layered in the right kind of way and looked kind of natural. Uh, so yeah. After drawing over all the flowers, I filled in the base colors and now I'm getting the background in place. It's kind of hard to tell what the background in the AI created picture is exactly, but I kind of saw branches with a petal-like texture, so that's what I'm going with. I drew some branches and used a leafy brush to add some texture. I apply the texture of different shades of pink to add depth. I'm keeping this very rough because I'm going to blur all of this so the details don't really matter. Now I can move on to the character. Like before, I'm keeping my layers separate when adding the first passive shading and later I'll merge everything when doing the cleanup. The last picture I did had a very obvious light source. It was on the upper right. However, the light source wasn't super apparent for this one. When looking at the picture, it seemed like it was sort of coming from the lower left. If you are basing it on the shading of the hand, and having the light source coming from the lower left was a bit different for me. I tend to default to the upper right, upper left, and from behind. So this was kind of a fun change. And it definitely made me play around with how I wanted to shade the face. Also, something kind of annoying happened. But it ended up being good in the end, I guess. <laughs> 
So basically, I had completely shaded the hair, and like I said, I'm being a bit more detailed this time around when it comes to the hair shading. So I spent like almost an hour shading the hair, but then I ended up hating it. And I was trying my best to save the shading because I spent so long on it, but then I was getting frustrated, like so frustrated I wanted to chuck my pen out a window because it just wouldn't work. <laughs> and then I started to doubt myself and question everything. Uh, so I took a break and then decided it would be easier to just start over on shading the hair. And I am glad I did for two reasons. The first being I do like how it turned out more the second time. And the second reason being that for some reason the footage for shading the hair the first time was corrupted. Uh, so you wouldn't have gotten to see it. So yeah, it was a bit annoying, but overall good because now you can see me shading the hair. I guess it was a happy accident kind of thing. <laughs> The main reason I didn't like the hair the first time is that there was too much contrast and it just looked really off. So this time I tried to tone down how dark and light I let things go. I was also trying to balance adding detail but not too much that it looks out of place. It's almost like I was wanting to over render the hair to the point that it didn't match the style of everything else. So I was trying to not overdo things if that makes sense. And can I just say shading the hair was a bit hard on my wrist. <laughs> There was a lot of flicking motions, but I think it turned out okay. It looks fluffy, I think, so that's nice. Now it was time for the flowers, and I was considering going into detailed rendering for each flower, but then I was like, no, I don't really want to do that. <laughs> so to speed things up a bit, I applied different colors to the flowers, and as I was doing this, I was trying to think of how the light was hitting the flowers. And for the flowers that are in the more visible areas, I did add some detail. I just didn't bother to add details to the flowers that were less visible or more in shadow uh, since it's not as needed. Also to help the flowers feel like they have a bit more variety in their coloring, I found a texture and played around with the layer modes a bit until I thought it looked good. This was a really easy way to make the flowers look more interesting. I do have to say I did enjoy working with the digital painting process again, especially since it has been a really long time since I worked like this. Working in this way feels a bit more freeing mostly because it is so easy to change things and I'm doing the cleanup process as I'm doing the rendering. It does also result in a kind of different look from my usual illustrations. I do get comments that say they think my line art kind of makes things stiff, so I'm questioning if these pictures maybe look a bit less stiff. It's kind of hard for me to tell for myself. Sometimes I wish I could look at my art as if it wasn't my art so that it'd be easier to spot things. Uh, but yeah, overall, I enjoyed working with the painting process, and I think I'll consider using it more often. So now let's see how this one compares to the AI version. Once again, mine ended up being more colorful. I can't help it. I love colors. <laughs> this kind of challenge was a lot of fun to do, and using crayon to generate inspiration for pictures was an interesting way to come up with ideas and different inspiration. It also encouraged me to do things a bit differently from usual, and it's good to do that in art from time to time. It also reminded me how much I like to do digital painting. So overall, this was really fun to do. Before we end, I want to say a super big thank you to all my YouTube members and Patreon patrons. Thank you so much for your support. It means a ton to me. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!